So this one mistake nearly cost me how to open a glass amp. If you have a blue dot on your ampule, you'll never guess what happened. You open it in a quick movement. It's just one swift move. One, two, three. <laughs> You'll never guess what happened when I finally learned how to open a glass amp. So, I want to take you through what I've discovered that makes opening a glass ampule very simple. One thing you have to be aware of, so firstly, when you locate your ampule that you want to open, you have to observe that there's no oil or liquid in the top part of the ampule. If you do, you're going to end up with having less than the full amount of the ampule when you open it because all a good chunk of the oil is stuck in the top of the ampule. So to remove that, there's a couple different techniques you can follow. One, you can try to flick down the ampule and that should remove the oil. Another option is to flick it with your, with your finger and that should push the oil down. So either way, either a quick movement of your hand or flicking it with your finger should remove any of the excess oil that would sit in the top part of the ampule or the neck of the ampule. Then have a look at the ampule and look for a blue dot if that is on your actual ampule. This other ampule I have here does not have a blue dot and as a guide I find it easier to just locate where the writing is and have the writing facing me and then follow with the motion where I break it away from myself. If you have a blue dot on your ampule, like here, then have that blue dot facing yourself. And when you open this, a lot of people complained about cutting their finger. And one thing you want to make sure of is that you keep your finger away from the opening, but also that when you do open it, you open it in a quick movement away from yourself. When you move it, if you were to do it the opposite towards yourself, you're going to break it or you're going to shatter it. And that could happen as well. You can shatter this thing if you squeeze it too tight at the top of the neck. So good practice for sterility is I'll use an alcohol wipe and I will wipe off the, the neck of the area in between the ampule and uh, the neck, ampule neck and the main body. Okay, once that's dry, of course you'd have your hands washed before this. Once it's dry, you locate the blue dot on the ampule. I'm right-handed, so I hold the actual ampule with my left hand and then with my right hand, I put my thumb on that blue dot and I've got my two fingers holding the ampule like so. And really it's just one swift move. One, two, three and I've opened up. I didn't cut myself. I didn't shatter it. I do this nearly every day and it's really really that simple and as you notice there's no oil in the top bit of my ampule then if i need to draw out draw out the uh the solution then that's when i have a syringe this is a one ml syringe this is a 18 gauge one inch inline filter needle so what that means is there's a filter within this needle that helps filter out any glass particles because i've opened up that ampule there are microscopic glass particles inside potentially we want that to filter up. So it's going to filter it out to about five microns. It's for glass, but it's not for anything else. So if you're using a one mil syringe, that's what I'll demonstrate. With a one mil syringe, you simply open it, open up the 18 gauge filter needle, and then this is a lure lock. That means it screws in. So I'm going to screw the syringe into the needle or the filter needle. I can remove the cap. You can notice you do not want to ever inject with this. This is only for filling your syringe. This is a syringe. That's your filter needle. And it's thick, 18 gauges, because it allows for quicker aspiration or allows you to quickly remove the content of your ampule. Again, these are called ampules, not vials. And you just place in there. And what I find is sometimes really hard to fill one mil, one milliliter of solution in a one mil syringe without having issues. So my technique is I will fill this about halfway. I'm going to stop and then you see a bubble in there. I'm going to pull back on the plunger and I'm going to have more air and I got all these air bubbles. And so with the air bubble, I'm going to just flick it and keep flicking, 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 flicking until I have a one large air bubble, okay? And then I'm going to push up, okay? Until I see just a tiny, up, tiny bit of oil. Flick that over and I go back into the syringe and I'm able to get out the entire one mil. One thing to note with some of the BD1 ML syringes, there is no stopper. It means if you keep pulling out, you'll pull the plunger all the way out of the body of the syringe. You don't want to do that. You keep, okay, so now I've got this. Okay, now I've got lots of bubbles and those are annoying. Again, you just, if you keep, when if you hold your finger so that it doesn't come out uh, the plunger and then just flick, you'll see that now most of those bubbles are merging together. Okay, now both of those bubbles are merging together. And then, and then what you'll do is you can recap it. There really is no more room left. So you can't really pull back any further because you will risk the plunger coming out and you don't want to do that because it will be sterile. You can unscrew the needle filter and then you can pick which syringe. So if you want to do a subcutaneous or shallow intramuscular injection, you can use, this is a 
57 gauge, half of an inch needle. Or if you want a more a deep intramuscular injection, that's a one inch needle. It's a one inch needle that you could use as well. So I just pick one, the 27 gauge. You get this lure lock, so I just screw that on. And then there's a little bubble of air. And I just push from the bottom of the plunger, making sure there's no tap a few times. So I push from the bottom. And then if I were ready to inject, I would um, make sure all the bubbles are out. Keep going. And I say there might be a little tiny bubble. And if you just keep, okay, so you might, so I, here I am right exactly at one mil and ready to inject. So that's an easier way to get out one full mil. If you were to draw out the whole thing at once, then the risk is you would probably have even less in there. But um, because we removed anything uh, from the sustenon uh, in, the, in the neck of the ampule, uh, we were able to get uh, nearly all of it out of the one mil. So when you open an ampule, you need to make sure, and this is the one mistake that I nearly did to cost me the entire ampule, this one mistake was for me not to flick out the oil in the top of the ampule. So some of these ampules will be uh, in a box, they'll be moved around, and there'll be additional oil. And if I open that without flicking out the additional oil, I end up with less testosterone than I need to have for my injection. So if I were to inject one milliliter of testosterone, I need to make sure that there's no oil in the top of the neck of the ampule. Secondly, I need to have a good technique for drawing it out to make sure I get the entire one ml to fit in my one ml syringe. That's a problem. If you, if you have a two ml syringe or a three ml syringe, and you try to draw out one mil, it's not too hard. You just draw it out. You should have everything you need and then you adjust it. But when you've got a one ml of solution in an ampule and you're trying to put one ml into a syringe, it's a bit trickier. So I'm going to show you how to avoid a mistake that nearly cost me the entire ampule. So in order to do this, firstly, we need to be able to open up the ampule. And as I showed in another video, you want to make sure that if your ampule of testosterone has a blue dot, that, that blue dot faces towards you. If your ampule does not have any blue dot, then I usually, you don't have to, but I usually line up the writing facing me and then I snap it away. So simply, I probably will want to wipe the, the neck of the ampule just in case there's any bacteria or microbes on there. I wipe it, I let it dry, make sure there's no extra oil in the top so I don't lose additional testosterone. I place, I'm right-handed, so my left hand, I hold on to the, the body of the ampule and then I've placed my thumb on the neck or by the blue dot and I'm moving it away. I'm, I'm cracking it away, I'm snapping it away from an action, I'm cracking, I'm snapping it open. And three, two, one, and I snap it open. Right, then I need to be careful uh, as I load my syringe, I'm going to use 18 gauge, that's the thickness of the uh, needle, and it's got a filter in it, that's five microns, and it's about an inch and a half, so we can reach into larger ampules. And I open them, I try not to touch anything as far as the bits that are going to touch the syringe. I've opened up the syringe carefully, and this is called a lure lock. That means it screws in, lure slips with slip in, a lure lock twists in, so I'm twisting it in. Okay, so that's how you assemble your syringe and your filter needle. I remove the cap. Notice you never ever ever want to inject with this. This is the purple pinkish filter needle. Blunt is very blunt. It's not very sharp. It is at an angle, but you don't want to inject with that. It'd be very painful. Right, then I tip the needle into the ampule and I just start pulling back on the plunger and my aim is to fill it halfway. So I'm going to fill halfway with solution. About half a mil. Okay, then I pause. Now, what I'm doing is I'm pulling back on the plunger till it hits the bottom. Now be careful, you can pull the plunger out and that won't make it sterile anymore. That'll be, that'll be a problem. So you just, you don't want to pull the plunger all the way out, but be careful you put it towards the bottom. And then I'll just maybe use one of my fingers and just hold it against the side of the syringe. And now is when I flick, flick, flick all the bubbles to remove the bubbles. And when I've got one massive bubble together, I can push up from the bottom of the syringe into the needle until I see a tiny little, tiny little droplet. There we go. Okay, so droplets come out. Flick that away. Then I place the needle back in ampule and I remove the rest of the contents. So I'm just trying to really get all of And as I pull back on the plunger, uh, I'm just kind of pulling it back and getting the rest of the... And this is a tricky bit because if you can't get this right, you may not get the full contents out of your ampule. But if you really keep it towards the bottom, I'm moving it around a little bit. Okay, and then you want to... It's going to pull. So with your hand, you, it's going to want to push back in. With your hand, you want to keep pulling. And you might even pull it back beyond the one mil. There'll be tiny air bubbles, maybe. You can pull it and... And that should be good.
it towards the end. Okay, so you can see I've got some bubbles. All right, the bubbles are coming in. I've got the plunger as far back as it really should go. I can flick the bubbles towards the top and there's probably 0.1s worth of. If I try to pull back any more, I just got a tiny bit of space then. There I do risk it um, coming out, so I don't want that to happen. And then I, I'll, I'll recap for a second. Now, normally I'd have some, maybe I'll, I'll have the old uh, wrapper. I might slide that in there just so it's not on the table itself. Probably won't matter as long as your surface is clean. And then I'll pick a needle that I'm going to inject with. And this is where I put this on and I will fine tune the syringe. So I've got to remove the needle filter. So I just twist that one off. I nearly lost it there. And then I'll twist it back on to the, the needle I'm going to inject with. So they swap it over because one, I was scraping the bottom of this ampule, which was would dull that too. I never want to inject this anyway. And three, I want a fresh needle. And now I've got to get rid of that little air bubble. So if I'm getting ready to inject, I'll go to where I want to inject. And then I look to get all the air out and I'll tap it, make sure there's no more air in the barrel of the syringe. So no more air. And then I push the bottom of the plunger up, 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 a little bit comes out. So right now I'm right at the one ml size, but I still have tiny, tiny air bubbles. So I want to keep making sure that right at the top and I can just, there we go. All the bubbles out. I'm just slightly, slightly more than one mil. Just, just a, just a tad more, but that's, that's it. And, um, and there's a little bit of oil on the side of the needle. And this now is ready to inject. So that's how you prepare it. And uh, the next step would be ready for injection, which we have in other videos if you want to check them out.